Hello, everyone. Welcome to What's Up Kappa. My name is Sue Ann Hong, and I'm the president and CEO. And today I have a very special guest. Uh, her name's Nancy Du. Nancy is a retired income certified professional, and she was actually named one of the top female advisors of Atlanta in 2019 and 2020 by the National Association of Insurance and Financial Advisors. Nancy's passionate about helping clients make intentional financial decisions, and she works closely with clients to understand the full scope of their financial needs and helping them build a roadmap to financial independence. She immigrated from China in 2003 and settled in Atlanta, and she attended the University of Georgia and received her MBA in finance. So welcome, Nancy. Thank you, Sue Ann. Thank you very much. I'm so, honored to be here with you today. Thank you. I'm so glad that you're able to join us. Why don't you start off by sharing with our viewers just a little bit about how things are going for you personally and with your family during this COVID-19. So as you said, I am from China. I actually started my COVID-19 experience back in January. Yes. So after six years, you know, I decided to go back to China, visit my family and celebrate the Chinese New Year with them. So I arrived in China in, on January 21st. And by January 23rd, the country was in lockdown and everybody was in panic. So I was like, wow, I could not plan better than this. <laughs> so, but you know, I was able to spend some time with my sister, brothers and my dad. And I remember those days we could not go anywhere. I was not able to visit friends. So I actually, you know, took lots of walks with my dad. So that was kind of like a, you know, a surprised outcome. I was able to spend more time with my dad. So after a few days, I decided I need to cut my trip short. I need to go back to the U.S. because there was some uh, kind of a news about airline companies may cancel the flights. So my schedule was coming back on February 3rd. So by January 29th, I made a decision, I need to go back today. Mm -hmm. I was lucky enough to got the last ticket on 29th. So I got, the, um, got on the airplane and flew back to Atlanta, uh, arriving on January 30th, because I was aware, you know, I was exposed to the virus on my trip. So I made a decision, I got to protect my family and community, my friends here. So I decided to do self-quarantine for 14 days after I came back. And that, that's what exactly I did. And thankfully I had friends to support me, you know, provide one shopping for me, got the food and everything. So I thought after that 14 days, I'll be done with coronavirus. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, on March, you know, uh, as we all know, so the US, the pandemics was getting worse and worse. So the whole country now is in, quarantine yeah so yeah. to me i'm getting kind of getting used to this lifestyle now quarantine wow. has been three months almost more than three months for me that's amazing so talking about your family in china um tell me a little bit about your personal journey and how you got to where you got to and you know what caused that okay so i was born in the 1970s if you know some history about china that was cultural revolution the communist was going through some cultural revolution. Was every, the whole country was kind of going through poverty. So I remember my mom and dad were barely could feed four of us growing up. We did not have any, you know, luxury things, food. If we can eat some meat, we will be happy for that dinner. And on the Chinese New Year, that what we hoped for was meat on the dinner table and may have some a little bit you know some new clothes for the year so that was my childhood dream and i i grew up in the countryside by default if i i will be a farmer i will be planting you know harvesting working in the field and uh, but I, I still remember vividly remember i was a young girl and looking at the buses coming through you know our village i thought one day i want to get out of this place. I don't want to, you know, be a farmer for the rest of my life. That was my childhood dream. 
And I did not know how far I could come, you know, looking back today. Now I'm here in the United States. So I came here in 2003. For, for me, I always like, if the default is not my choice, I have to be willing to take risk and make change, do whatever it takes to change my life. And I have been benefit from doing that. So, you know, uh, came to the United States, of course I knew I would have tremendous obstacles when it comes to language. I was in my thirties. I would say my English speaking and reading levels like a middle school or high school level. So language was a big obstacle. And also, you know, adjust to a new country. I was, I have built a pretty successful career you know, by age 33 in China. So I was working in big banks and working as a director for corporations in financial planning and managing accounting teams. So came here and I was nobody. So that was a huge challenge, but I knew that's, that was my choice. So I need to do whatever it takes. Again, I went back to school, got my MBA from the University of Georgia. And I'm always grateful, you know, the education I got here was, I did not have money to pay for it, but school offered a full scholarship and assistantship. It was a tremendous help. And after I graduated from MBA, I was able to go back to corporations and go back to my profession, doing financial planning for companies. And at that time, I had two dreams when it comes to personal finance. First, I wanted to support my son to go to a college of his dream. I want to financially support him. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I wanted to build my own retirement nest egg. So I won't become a burden to him one day. As a single mom, it was not easy. But, you know, I managed to make it happen. Now, you know, in 2018, my son graduated from uh, Vanderbilt a private and prestigious college with only 15,000 student loan. I think, you know, the biggest thing is mom was able to look into what resources we can tap into. <laughs> be intentional and uh, be strategic. There are tremendous resources we can do. So, and that's why exactly how I came to this industry. Well, when I talking to friends came to another country, one biggest thing is they found it's very difficult to understand how money works in this system. I was able to share my experience with them. And then five years ago, I made a decision. I want to help my community. So I got all the license certification and then I become a financial planner. Now I'm helping you know, our community immigrants and uh, my passion is really helping women professionals and uh, business owners and families, and young professionals like my son. It makes huge difference when, I, when we understand how to work with the system so we can make really strategic financial decision for our families. Well, first of all, your personal story is amazing and just the journey of you know, making those intentional decisions. And, and I heard some key things here, taking risk, some calculated risk, it's amazing. And the fact that you actually brought your son to the US as a single mother, right? And yes. So that was that in itself. And then establishing yourself here from an educational and professional career perspective. So tell us a little bit about some of the things that you see when you're doing financial planning with all the different types of families and young professionals and others, what are some things that you see that maybe people can do better differently in regards to managing their finances? One thing when I, uh, let's say uh, younger professionals, I feel like, you know, building financial success is like running a marathon. Mm. The early you start, the better position you will be. But a lot of time, you know, try to manage the, the current, today's responsibilities, paying rent, college loans, stuff like that, yeah. or some save for tomorrow, like the travels we want to do, or build a you know, retirement fund. Lots of times we don't find the extra money actually can, we can put it away. So when I work with uh, families, one thing 
I want to, you know, help them is really to manage their cash flow. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, when they feel they got have a handle on their cash flow, deliberately putting money away, they feel more fulfilled knowing they're doing the right thing. The other thing is how to manage emotions and behaviors. When it comes to money, you probably your own enemy. So normally I would help them to craft a system, a process that help them, you know, making the automatic transfer to the place they want the money to, to be. So that's kind of really helpful. And uh, what your point about automatically doing uh, like auto deductions so that your mo- you don't even see that money during the month and you, you don't act like it exists almost. And, exactly. Uh, and that's great during normal times, Nancy, but with COVID-19 going on and with people in financial uh, situations that are very different potentially than what they were before COVID-19, mm-hmm. how are you advising individuals who may be in maybe financial uh, dire straits or what's different now? We are in a very unprecedented time. Lots of people are losing jobs or have concerns of losing jobs. And the income just stopped for lots of business owners, like my clients in restaurant business or retail, all the income stopped. So first, the priority is how we can navigate through this crisis financially. Normally, you know, first thing I would like them to sit down, really assess where you are today. Be Mm -hmm. honest, you know, take the time to assess your reality. And then, you know, look at the, the, create a budget. This is probably a different budget you would have in February or January. So create a budget, prioritize your bills. What are the essential bills you absolutely need to pay? Mm -hmm. What bills you can delay to the month, to the time you may be more comfortable to pay? And also try to look into transactions, previous transactions, what you can cut. Personally, I had the time to look into some of my transactions in February. I was was able to cut some uh, app subscriptions some of them I was not even aware why I'm paying this 999 for this subscription I don't even use. Mm. So really look into where, where your money goes. Can you eliminate those unessential bills per, temporarily or even permanently reduce those bills? Mm-hmm. I think this is a perfect time. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And uh, when you and I were talking, um, we talked about eating out versus having yeah. to cook uh, and exactly. the fact that now everybody has to cook and what that means, like, you know, going and getting a very expensive cup of coffee mm-hmm. and compared to, you know, I'm making coffee at home. Yeah. I'm making, I'm making coffee at home every day. And by the so, way, I'm not a barista, so it doesn't taste as good, but <laughs> <laughs> it does the job. <laughs> The experience has shown we can live with it. Yeah. Maybe when we go back to normal, we, we cut our coffee to half yeah. what we used to be. I mean, or, if you think about it, what, $4, $5 a cup, and you even if you do you know, 100 days a year of coffee, that's a yeah. lot of money. That's $400, $500. Yeah. So, you know, really kind of look into your, the quarantine time expenses trend compared with the previous trend. Great. You, I'm sure you can find some cut you can do without you know, substantially affect your lifestyle or the quality of your life. So the more you can cut, the better when you come out of this, you will build better financial habits. Yes, so, during, so what are some frequent questions you are receiving maybe from some of your clients who are uh, coming to you right now in this time, any particular themes or questions? Um, Particularly how to run through cash flow at this period of time. For business owners, what are the available resources they can tap into? And personally, you know, if I lose a job, what are my uh, liquid assets I can tap into Mm -hmm. to carry you over through this period of time? And at the same time, I feel two trends I noticed. 
people are start to think about protections. Because we are in this situation, we understand you know, how fragile our life can be. A young, you know, 30 something could die from this coronavirus situation. So people start to think about protection plans. Things can happen to me anytime. Do I have a will, legal documents? Mm -hmm. Do I have a power, financial power of attorney? If something happened to me, who can have access to my finances? Do I have a healthcare power of attorney? If I cannot make a decision for myself, who can? And also disability insurance protection, life insurance protection. If we have young kids, do we have enough life insurance to protect them if something happens to me? Yes. How we can replace that income? So families are looking into, you know, evaluate their situation. And most of us do not have that optimal protection. So I would recommend really, you know, assess your situation and then work with a financial professional, making sure we are covered for all situations. Absolutely. So out of all of those things, those are great tips uh, to check in, you know, to think about during this time. One of the things that I wondered as I was listening is what a, is the most critical protection you think that would be for right now in this moment in time for coronavirus all those things are great but you know in terms of wills and protection disability all of that but if i'm a young professional and you know i'm starting out maybe i have a young family what's my number one priority emergency fund making sure we have enough emergency fund so my experience has been, you know, when you have that three months, six months, nine months, or a year emergency fund sitting there, you just can sleep well during the night. This is very important. I cannot stress enough. Always have at least a six month emergency fund sitting there. So if something happens, we have that money can carry out over that period of time. So if, I, if I'm a, let's say that I'm, Two, I'm a couple, we don't have any kids. What would be the reasonable amount of money? Hmm. Three months, six months? You know, we all have different uh, level of, uh, let's see, how comfortable level, I would say, you know, based on your personal, you know, how comfortable you are with. Right, and whether or not you have kids. Yeah, yeah. I would think, you know, your job, sta how stable your job are. Mm -hmm. If you think you are have a very com competitive profession, professional, you know, career, if you lose your job this month, you may pick up another job in, within three months. But sometimes, based on your age and your what profession you you are, it can it can take you a year. Yeah. So it's just a depend on your personal situation. And uh, you know what level of cash sitting there make you comfortable. So, and also work with a financial professional. How you know share with your concerns and how you how you can improve your personal situation. So Nancy, this you know this financial acumen piece is so important, especially now because if I have three months of salary in the bank, I'm in much better position than, you know, if I'm burning through check to check, obviously. So if I wanted to get started and if I want to just, maybe I don't have that circumstances where I could have done that in the past. And as we're coming out of this situation, what's, what can I, how can I start? Where's my starting point? Starting point. Good question. I would suggest look into three areas. First, your cash flow. Look at your spending habits, your income trend. Create a budget. And one concept that I want people to know is your burn rate. How much does it take to run your life? You know, your car loans, student loans, or you rent everything, just absolutely need to sustain your life. That's what I call we call the burn rate. And the other one is identify what other spendings actually are discretionary. Basically, you can spend it on what you, you don't have to. Restaurants, 
vacations, concerts, things like things like that. So separate those two. Basically, you know the the essentials. You know, when you, you to match your income, you cannot grow your essentials at a percentage that your income will not be able to sustain. Mm -hmm. So control your burn rate, and at the same time look at your discretionary expenses how you can lower your discretionary expenses so you you end up saving more and also be clear you know set your goals i i feel like when you have a financial goals long term short term you are very motivated to save that kind of a, you know gave you the motive motivation where why i put my money away so when my son graduated from college, we set up his first financial goal is save up three months of your emergency fund. And he was on it. Once you, you have that, met that goal, you feel good about it. Wow, I actually met my first financial goal. And then we stretch a little bit, you know, okay, I'm gonna take advantage of my company's match for 1K. I'm gonna put more money into that. So basically you, kind of have a clear goal and also match that goal with automatic transfers. Basically, you know at what timeline, what it takes to meet that financial goal. So once you set up that, you are good track. One of the things I want to highlight, very, very important, everyone, is 401k match. You need to match that 100% if possible or max out you know, that is huge. Why would you leave money on the table? Yeah. If at all possible. I think I've heard my financial advisor also say, you know, that's where you start. Before you put money anywhere else, max that out and then go to other sources. Yeah. So Absolutely. as your career moves forward, I think that's huge. So I, I learned that very early on in my career. So it makes huge difference. Yes, absolutely. So yeah. Nancy, uh, from a perspective of, if you were to say here, you know, walking away, I heard you say cash flow is probably one of the top things. The foundation. It's like an engine in your car. Yes. And then you said doing a, an assessment of your income versus the burn rate. Mm -hmm. That's a new term for me. I had not heard that before. And so that's how much am I burning through the expenses that are essential versus non-essential or discretionary is what I heard you say. Yes. So if at least people can start with those primary main basic concepts. Yes. Could that be, they'd be off to a good start. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And also, you know, look into the protection plans. Are you protected mm -hmm. from different scenarios? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when it comes to investment, where investment goes, align your investment, the risks you take with your time horizon. You know, if it is invested for retirement account, you can take a little bit more risk. So again, work with a financial professional, really kind of review your investment portfolios, making sure they are aligned with your time horizon and your financial goals. That's fantastic. So if people were to uh, reach out to you and if they want to connect with you, how would they do that? You can find me on LinkedIn, Nancy Du, or send an email to me at nancydu at ashfordadvisors.net. So Nancy Du, you guys, that's D-U. So I just want to make sure. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you want to leave the audience with? Because this is a very, very critical time right now in terms of finances. I know people are really going through a very stressful time. So as I can see, you know, I am passionate about helping people. I am offering a free complimentary strategy session based on your situation, how we can better manage money, control money for today and tomorrow. So if you are interested, send me an email. I will send you my calendar that we can schedule a time to talk through about what you're going through. Hopefully I can help you you know, you make better financial decisions. And one last question, Nancy, where are you licensed? Because that might be a question that comes up for people. I am in Georgia, 
but I'm licensed in uh, another few states like uh, Florida, California, and other states. So the initial conversation should not be a, you know, license should not be a barrier. So feel free to reach out. Very good. Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed the session with Nancy. It's like a crash course, basically, in, in uh, financial decision-making and strategy. So I hope you found this helpful, and we may have to bring Nancy back for some more uh, in-depth advice about, you know, as we're coming out of COVID-19, what do we do next? So thank you for the session today, Nancy. It was a pleasure to have you. Thank you, Sue Ann. I enjoyed speaking with you guys. All right.